Margaret coming to you from the shop and we're gonna go live with Chris Kloof of Chris Kloof Designs just shortly. He'll be joining us for our Meet the Maker event today. Um, if you miss any part of today's event, the recording will be on our Instagram as well as on our YouTube. So it's okay if you have to leave early or if you miss the beginning of it. So we're just waiting for Chris to join us. Um, Chris is well known for his Mocha Megane designs as well as for his Damascus steel designs and just for being an innovator in the jewelry industry. He, he makes the impossible possible. He never says no to anything that a customer asks him to do. So he's going to give us a tour of his shop so we get to see some of the different machinery that he uses to, to create his incredible pieces. He's also going to do a demonstration for us too so we can see um, so we can see um, how, he, how he makes things, how he does his thing. Okay, I see that Chris joined us so he's going to shortly ask to, to be part of this live and we'll go split screen and you'll be able to see both of us. Um, which is which is still pretty amazing technology to me. <laughs> hope everyone's having a good day today. It's nice and sunny today in Michigan. I hope it's sunny wherever you guys are, wherever you're joining us from. And again, if you miss any part of this evening's events, you can see the recorded video on our Instagram, on Chris's Instagram, or on our YouTube channel. Join us shortly. There he is. Hi, Good afternoon. <laughs> how are you? Oh, I'm doing fine. How are you? Good. Good. Excellent. Well, we've got a ton of stuff planned. Um, I'm, I'm going to let you finish, and then I want to introduce a couple people here. But then, why don't we just like leap right in? Okay, sure. Um, we're going to wait just stall a little bit um, to get some more people to join us. Um, so I was just saying to the audience that I am still in awe of this technology that you're, you know, hundreds of miles away and we can still do this event together. I know you're in Massachusetts. Where exactly are you in Massachusetts? Uh, we are in Central Mass, so just north of uh, Worcester is the, the biggest city. So, so just right in the middle of the state. Yep. Yep. You, you know, if you don't count the arm, you know, the Cape Cod arm, if you just count mm -hmm. like the block of the state, we're kind of dead in the center of it. So. Okay. Um, and how big is your shop? So we're about 10,000 square feet. It's wow. easier to say 10,000, like 9,800, 9, but so let's just say 9,800, but you know, okay. so and good size. Yeah, definitely. Just for comparison's sake, our whole store is maybe 1,200 square feet. <laughs> And yeah. our shop in the back is maybe 250 or 300 square feet. We have a fair amount of uh, space, but, you know, what we do takes up a fair amount of equipment. So, um, you know, it definitely is something that, uh, um, uh, yeah. So, so yes. <laughs> Um, I'm going to take a second. I want to just introduce, though. Um, so we, we did. I know you said you wanted a few more people to join, but I've got the forge going. So we're we're going to be a little limited by that. We need to go okay. check on that and get kind of get going. Oh, sure. I wanted to give you guys a good demo. So I want to just um, swap out for um, my safety glasses here before we start to wander around. And I want to introduce everybody to Krista. Uh, so there's Krista. Hi, Krista. Uh, say hello. And um, and uh, Krista is our office manager and general maker of things that happen in scheduler, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> And then Anne Cahoon, um, who's Hi, still behaving well and rocking her mask. Anne is going to be our camera woman today, but Anne is also my wife, and she is the um, uh, uh, instructor at North Bennett Street School, the jewelry manufacturing repair instructor there. So, um, so she's volunteered to be our camera person. I, I imagine she'll be pretty good at knowing what to take pictures of. Um, and what I can do is we'll start here and sort of wander down. But basically, we have our shop broken up into a bunch of different um, areas. We've got our office area. So starting sort of from this wall where the books are, um, we've got Krista's office. And then I'm only going to give you a really quick view of my office because it's really a mess. Quick view of my office, a bunch of my crazy toy collection stuff and board game stuff. And then we have our little conference room. But we're going to come back here and we'll finish up and we'll show you some new designs and show you some of the exciting stuff that we've got. <laughs> That we've been working on and um, some of the things. So here's um, 
our main shop where we do all of our precious metal work and we're set up um you know with setting benches we've got a couple of laser welders of course you know a uh, regular bench and a stone setting bench and both mariah and i are set up that way um mm -hmm. tons of my projects and and damascus and mokume and that, that you know sort of the next the next phase of things to be worked on these are kind of cool some some big deep drawn mokume bowls that we've oh, you know cool. got to finish and do some things this is also kind of cool. It's tucked back here because it was a work in progress, but that's actually Mokume. It's a big giant uh, hand raised Mokume vase. Um, and then we've got, you know, in this room, our rolling mills and sort of the real standard jewelry type tools um, that, um, you know, is pretty common to uh, everybody's shop. So rolling mills and scales and grinders. And we've got a couple special creatures in this room though. We've got this straight line machine, which is really a very cool machine from um, probably from about 1920 or so, uh, 19, uh, could even be a little earlier. Um, and um, what this does is this is actually, if you've ever seen like the old Fabergé cigarette cases, um, yeah. it does things like that. So really kind of a cool machine. Um, and then we'll get back to this later if we have a couple minutes. This is our sort of our, our Rose engine. Um, well, it's not sort of, it is our Rose engine, one of our, one of our fabulous uh, tools that we have that's based off of an antique machine, but it was actually built in 2005. And we've got, you know, the rest of the bench areas, our, our, our third person bench, which doesn't get used that often, and then Mariah's bench area. Um, and then we have, you know, polishing and cleaning, I should say, laser cutting and engraving and drag engraving, and then polishing and cleaning and ultrasonics and, uh, all the things that you'd expect to see in a jewelry shop. And, and then it gets a little bit different. You know, here we have our fume hood uh, for doing our acid etching of our Damascus. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have a 50 ton, actually it's a 55 ton press we use up here a whole lot. Um, and that press gets used for a lot of our forming actions. And then since we do so much precious metal machining, we have a whole little machine area set up here that's just designed for precious metals, you know, um, you know, and downstairs we have some some bigger tools for doing machining. So okay, so we've got our our, our precious metal area, and then there's kitchen, and and you know, and and Anne's got a separate studio space through that door there, but we won't go bother that space, and we'll uh, <laughs> we'll head downstairs. So one of the things that makes us really different, I should show you this in the way by we've got another one of our old machines here, and this is very similar to that straight line machine, but it does work like this. Oh, cool. So more in a rotary fashion than in a straight line fashion. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, but what makes us really different is our downstairs space. So we've got our little spiral staircase. I don't make anybody throw up, but we'll see. Um, and then we've got a little gym area here, and, and we call that jokingly the room of requirement back there. That's where like all the spare jewelry tools and everything live. And then uh, we've had this building for three years, but it's still a work in progress. We're still building out some of our areas. This will be actually uh, more of a prototype and engineering space for electronics. Um, you know, we do a lot of things um, that are outside of the jewelry realm. And then we've got this room here, and this is sort of the special room, um, and it's set up um, a little a little differently. This is all equipment that we use once or twice a year. So we have it arranged so we can get at it. And then we've got our water jet, our mass finishing area over there. We've got our machine shop area over here. So multiple lathes and uh, milling machines and CNC machines and spare lathes and then cutting and grinding and, and all that important stuff, I guess. We have a whole bunch of different equipment, you know, our belt sander for, for grinding off the surface of flat bar when we make flat um, uh, Damascus material, our rolling mill for rolling hot Damascus, uh, power hammer. Um, we've also got our forge, which we pre-lit, as I said. So we're gonna do a little quick demo for you. Okay. And um, our forging press. I'm gonna put on hearing protection in just a second, and it's gonna be pretty loud. Anne's gonna take the camera um, but basically, mm -hmm. um, we'll do a little bit of forging, won't take long, and because it's already just super, it's hot here today, and now it's super hot in here, so I'm like, we'll, we'll yeah. get this done pretty quick. Um, and once I have on some uh, hearing protection, um, I'm going to just jump right in. And what we're doing is in the forge, let me show you, I've got uh, a bar of material that belongs to a customer um, that is a carbon shave company. He's out in the middle part of the country in Minneapolis. 
okay. and um, I need to do some forging for him. And then what's, uh, you're not going to see it, but you're going to see me pull out some small little, um, they look like small little tiny chunks of material. And mm -hmm. we're going to upset those. And that's how we make our cosmic pattern, one of our new Damascus patterns. Oh. So, so let's, let's get unboring. Oh, yeah, there's a, there's a chunk. There's a chunk Ann just found. And let's get unboring. I'm going to hand this to Karen to Ann and grab <laughs> okay. some of her gloves and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll go. Hi, Ann. Hey. <laughs> so how many people work there with Chris? So uh, we are a total of seven, including all of our part-timers. Okay. Nice. And I'm going to take my hearing protection off really quickly because you're a little bit muffled. Oh, okay. Sorry um, about that. Yeah, what is that? Is that a water trough? That I'm sorry. Is that I a think, water trough? Yes. So that is a, um, it's a stock tank, and we use that for quenching. You'll see it okay. in just a minute. Okay. So we're getting the power hammer powered up. Okay, that's our red hot Damascus. <laughs> Very cool. <laughs> If you've just joined us, we're live with Chris Bluth in Massachusetts, and he is power hammering some red hot to make this scale for us. <laughs> it's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. <laughs> Yeah. 
Anne, can you hear me or do you still have your hearing protection on? I just put my hearing protection off. Okay, perfect. And it's How, hot? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> How hot is that forge? That's about 2300 degrees or so and we're forging at about 1700 degrees. Okay, and that's Fahrenheit? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That was so satisfying to watch it get pressed. That must yes. be really fun to do. <laughs> I love my job. <laughs> so do we get to see, you know, once it's cool enough for you to handle it, can we see what it looks like now? Absolutely. Yeah. So starting piece was real similar to what is here. So there's a starting piece. Okay, so just a chunk of Damascus. Yep. Yep. And this is where we're going with it. Oh, nice. It looks yeah. like a beautiful rock now. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's going to be a beautiful ring. And, um, and, you know, and, and then this bar here, that, that, that bar that I've worked down, that'll actually get smaller diameter. But if you walk over here, I'll show you sort of what the next step is. So um, if we're going to make a ring out of one of these pucks, what we basically have to do is take it and cut it on the water jet um, and pull the ring blank out of it. And I made a post yesterday, I think, so I could reference to it, but uh, of some of our ring blanks. But essentially, if you just have a round bar and you're just cutting rings off of the round bar, um, it actually gives you sort of a real, in my mind, it's almost a little bit of a boring look. It's sort of that straight line, you know, basic Damascus that everybody does. So yeah. we do a lot more differential forging just to try to create some new patterns. So um, it's a lot of fun. I'm going to leave you for Matt, who's not here today. Um, yeah, I was looking to see if I had an actual piece of the scrap of the puck, but I might have one upstairs. And um, we'll go upstairs. Uh, we've turned everything <laughs> off here, and we'll talk about some jewelry and some other stuff. Yeah, cool. I'm going to hand the There you go. All right. Do you mind turning off those lights over there? Okay, so. Been around camera, cooperate. Okay, um, let's go upstairs where it's a little cooler, where it's about 15 degrees cooler. <laughs> it was a real debate. I'm like, I don't know if we're gonna actually, I don't know if we're gonna actually forge today. It's really warm. It's really hot. I'm like, nah, the hell with it. Let's do it. So, but it was fun. It was very cool to watch. Well, it's one of those things where if I ever have an excuse to go down and play in the forge, you know, um, I enjoy it uh, immensely. So, um, so there we are. So, so are you mainly the one who uses that equipment down there or does Ann use it sometimes? Ann, Ann, does, Ann does help me for sure. And um, okay. Chuck also helps me as uh, one of our part-timers where uh, if, you, um, if you're into collectible knives, if you follow Gadratus Knives, uh, I've known Chuck for many years and he helps me out when we have big orders to fill. He's a uh, you know, skilled smith. Um, so definitely, um, um, sorry, I'm just trying to turn the fan off of the AC so that we can hear a little better. There we go. Okay. So. We have one unit with a really noisy fan. It's sort of a pain in the neck. But yeah, so it'll be either either myself and Ann or myself and Chuck. And we generally don't ever forge alone. You know, too many things can, can go wrong. I actually right. almost got hit in the face by a spun out bar once, you know. Okay. So it's, yeah, you've got to be, you've got to be conscious uh, of, of what you're doing and really cognizant of it so you don't hurt yourself. Um, so, so what we've got too, basically, I'm going to show you a couple of the new things and then we're going to bounce out of the room one more time. Sorry, getting rid of my safety glasses and putting them where I know they live. Yeah. Um, so we put out just a whole bunch of different things and a whole bunch of cool things. But the first things that I want to talk about are um, some of these rings here, you know, and these are a collection that's pretty near and dear to me because most of these in here, um, you know, these this ring uh, here and this ring here, um, you know, this ring that's got like the really fine edge on it. Oh, I see. Yeah, you know, try to get the focal length right. Yeah, so these rings here and also this whole tray, these are made um, in our Rose engine. Um, mm -hmm. And I really just love that machine. You know, we joke about it. We say that it's a machine that um, that we're really, we're more caretaking than we own. You know, it's not a, um, it's not a, um, uh, they're, they're very rare. There's only about 24 of these, I think, that were ever made of this particular one. And there used to be lots more, but they, they date back to uh, late 1700s um, when these were invented. And what we're going to do is just show you a little bit of this one, too, as well, yeah. because it's really super cool and super Jules Verne. Um, basically, this is a lathe. 
So this whole part is going to spin. Um, and I'm going to let Anne take the camera so she can get a little bit further back and actually show you things and I can point at things. So we've got, um, we've got our, 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 our rosette barrel. That's where the name Rose Engine comes from. Each one of these can be individually changed. It's a bit of a pain to change the whole, whole barrel, but there's a single one on the outboard that's much easier to change. And basically, this machine um, has a cutter uh, that's driven by a belt, and it's actually spinning here. We've got this one set up with a tiny little tool right here, and we're working on this ring right here. Um, this is actually where all of our work is going to happen. And then just a cross slide and a bunch of other things that help us do it. Um, what's going on here is there's a, actually, you're going to probably come to this side, I would okay. say. There's a little white part right there, and that's called a touch. Um, it's Delrin, and it's just a little white part. And that's riding across these bumps that are on these rosettes. So as we start this, if you find a point of reference to look, and it's a little hard with this rosette because it's not a really deep one, but this whole part of the machine is going to rock back and forth towards the tool. And it's tracing this rosette, and it's cutting. And then we can offset the rosettes. We can do any number of changes, but I'm just going to show you a, a real quick pass of offsetting. So yeah, that would um, be. <laughs> So I cheated and I did a little bit of cutting earlier and um, I figured it would be a good start and probably if you, you know, when you get a chance, you can kind of focus in there you see what's going on. One of the cool things with this machine is how clean everything is and how nicely it cuts. Um, that's the finish that comes off the machine. We don't have to mess with it. Um, you remove a few burrs sometimes, but other than that, it's really quite good. All right, I'm going to advance the tool in here. So what I'm going to do is actually, well, I'm going to back the tool out first. Then I'm going to step the tool over. And then I'm going to do one more adjustment here. I'm going to use this dividing plate to offset that pattern. If I just stepped it over, the pattern would look like, you know, circles or whatever we're cutting. We happen to be cutting like little diamonds. Um, it would look like diamonds next to diamonds. This way it's going to look like diamonds next to diamonds, um, but offset slightly. And then we're going to start cutting again. So you're going to get right in there and you can take a look and see. I'm going to come around behind you. <laughs> nice view of the mess there. Yeah, you got it. So. Very cool. <laughs> can you just use this on rings or can you put other items in there? Well, so that's the real interesting thing about this machine is we're stubborn. Um, but yeah, you absolutely can put other things in here. It's designed for wood. Um, huh? It was never designed to work metal. Um, but we're, um, we're pretty, um, pretty determined. We're pretty determined to work some, um, to work some metal with it. I'm going to advance the tool in now that it's made a full revolution all the way around. And we'll let that cut for a second because it does get to be a little bit like watching paint dry. Sure. <laughs> you know, yeah, believe me, you can zone out running it. But Anne grabbed a piece of wood, but this is just a piece of um, African black wood. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there we go. And it's designed for cutting wood. You can do some really beautiful things with it. It's a whole drawer full of little experimental samples here and, and different things. No, somebody, so somebody asked, it's like a lathe for metal. No, it's a lathe for wood. It's called a rose engine. It's a specialty lathe, but we've adapted it so that we can run metal parts on it. Um, yeah, thanks. The te I love the textures. Um, you know, you can you can work big chunks of wax on it too, and then we have pieces cast from it. Uh, some of the bracelets oh, we've been making lately and posting on Instagram. This was made on that machine. Uh, let's get a focal length here that works. Yeah, this is made on that machine. So um, you know, and then just cut and wax, and then cast in silver um, and oxidized. We haven't cleaned that one back yet, but yeah, it's a it's a a really special amazing machine you know and it just it just slowly turns and churns and does its thing um like i said very jules verne for me or <laughs> some people have said steampunk or whatever so i yeah. just advanced for the the final cut you can hear it got a little louder and basically what's going to happen now with that is it's going to go around and just cut and then we'd step it over and we'd continue cutting we're not going to do that because um that'd be really boring we're going to walk away <laughs> um we're going to walk away walk away uh, and uh, can you back it and just let it run on its own? Is that safe? Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah, I'll turn it off in a bit, and actually, it'll just finish its own its own pass like that. And we can talk just a, a, a bit about um, you know a few more things now that you've sort of seen it in action. This is what we're actually making right now, is that ring. So it's cutting those little diamonds, and you can see how they're offset fifty percent to each other. Um, you know, one of the cool things about about that lathe is as it's set up, if you try to do the math, it'll make your head melt. It's about 560,000 combinations that you can cut with that lathe of patterns. Um, yeah, it's absolutely insane. It's, it's sort of like an adult, uh, an adult spirograph is another way to look at it. Um, I mentioned when we were downstairs, those pucks. So that side profile probably looks pretty familiar. And then what we do is we'll use the water jet to cut a ring right out of it. And then we have a ring blank which we can then turn into a ring. So it still looks pretty ugly at this point, but you can see, I'm gonna flip the camera around. You can see. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, that's what's hidden inside of that. Yeah, and that's why a lot of our, you know, I like a lot of our patterns because they're pretty unusual and they're not like, you know, the nice thing is if you make your own steel, you have a lot of control over it. And, you know, and, and we, we do, you know, and, um, you know, and, and we've got the ability to harness that. Yeah, so. Um, let's see, what else can I show you here? Um, that's new and exciting. We have, we have so many, so many things that are new. And the best thing to do is, is like I always say, is follow us on Instagram because that's where we post new things first. Like those heart earrings that we're doing with Tony Lent and the little heart houses. Um, you know, we've always had our razor handles. We've got our COVID, uh, our COVID-19 Mocha Man Damascus, uh, keychains. Um, this is something new we've been working on. We're actually, um, crystallizing stainless steel um napkin rings and sterling silver there um Thanks. a whole new whole new engagement ring collection designed to be really price conscious these all retail under a thousand dollars without the stone and those um, are damascus yeah those are all damascus and then we've got um you know again the you know rose engine rings in silver and gold and also some of them in steel this is more of that crystallized stainless steel that we've been working on that's beautiful so yep and then um, this is a new Mokume collection that we've been working on. It's sort of an answer to, to everybody all of a sudden decided they wanted to sell cheap Mokume. So this is, um, this is uh, uh, sh uh, sh Shibuichi and um, pla uh, Platinum Enhanced Silver. Pla I'm sorry, Platinum Enhanced Silver. I don't even know what the heck I make, right? Durr. Um, but basically, this is uh, uh, Mokume rings that will start right around at retail, $450 at retail. Um, oh. But, you know, it's it's the color contrast isn't that strong, you know, and, and, and it's a copper alloy and silver, so it's relatively mm -hmm. soft. But, you know, as long as people are willing to accept that, um, you know, it, it's something that that, um, you know, people um, seem to enjoy, you know, and we, we and we're always we're just always working on a ton of different things. I mean, we've got um, uh, the bracelets there, the second shelf down. I mean, I know you guys just got one of the first ones we ever did without um, I keep like looking down. <laughs> I'm going to be doing is flipping. Sorry. Yeah, you know, you guys have one of the, the first ones that we did, but you know, we've been working on a, a whole host of these. It's got a nice one-handed clasp that's easy to maneuver. Um, you know, there's. Uh, let's go over to the to the shelves. What Please about the, the the toothpicks for the martini olives? Do you have some? Oh my gosh! Yeah, I've got a pile <laughs> of those around the corner. Hang on. So so um you know our um, um whole new earring collection. Here's a few more of those bracelets, including one that uh, we did with, with central links that glow. Um, oh. some, some knives that we made a while ago with Mokume handles and Hamon. That big brass thing in there, the, the reason this is in there is that's actually the first oxyacetylene torch that was ever imported to this country from France. Um, I bought it from a local museum when it went out of business. Um, all sorts of things. We've got We've got some new glasses. Nobody's really ever seen these. I've never posted these. So these are going to be something new that we're working on that are like, um, they're like our Damascus glasses, but just a little, um, uh, um, uh, a little less expensive. Um, Will you try so, those out for us so you can see them? <laughs> oh, I can. Yeah, I suppose. Um, yeah. And somebody says, uh, let's see, Disco Babushka. I love that so many of your pieces are injected <laughs> with a sense of humor. I know lots of dad jokes too, actually. Um, so hang on. So get something a little crazier here. These are a little narrow for me. We make these to size. Basically, everything's custom yeah. made. So um, those those really are, kinda, are they all one of a kind? Yeah. The, yeah. Well, they, they, they are. We're, we're talking about doing more of them, um, and we probably will ultimately. But, you know, we've got a couple, um, you know, we've already got a couple pairs, too, that are, you know. Um, so these are all Damascus steel, um, you know. And then we've got a pair that we haven't yet got lenses put in unfortunately 
right when COVID sort of began and things got to be a mess, um, we were talking about getting lenses put in these and we just haven't yet. So we're doing a half frame style as well. Mm -hmm. But everything is done. Basically, the way the process works with this is if somebody's interested in a pair of these is they just send us a, a pair of frames that fits them well. We need mm -hmm. them for a day to take measurements and then we can um, then we can custom craft um, glasses. Um, Who does yeah, the lenses? Do, so. do you do the lenses or? No, you get it done locally. So it's it's just like, I mean, these are Oakley frames. I don't know whose frames you're wearing, but they're carried in stores across the country, mm -hmm. you know, and, op and any good optician, they have it. It's, it's, it's actually a super cool tool, of course. It's a little scanner that scans the groove on the inside of the glasses. Mm -hmm. Then it cuts the edge of the rim of the lens. And, you know, and they did the lenses for this, the Damascus pair, the, the full lens pair that I showed you. They let me go back and watch them. And I was like, oh man, that thing is super cool. It sits on a tabletop. I mean, it's it's like the size of two big microwave ovens. And he's like, yeah, it's like $140,000. I was like, okay, well, I don't need one of those because a, I don't make lenses. And But it was, man, it was the coolest tool, like a laser scanner coupled with the CNC machine. So, but. These are from C in Ann Arbor, by the way. So a little shout out to C. Our C, local C yes. Our local Hopefully they're listening and watching or they'll, they'll at least check this out. Um, I'm going to go back and just turn off the, um, turn off the, uh, uh, arm bruster, the rose engine, and mm -hmm. show you guys where that's at. Okay. So do you collect, you have that, that acetylene torch, do you also just collect some, some different equipment and machinery? Uh, well, that, that actually has a little bit of a special story to it. Let me just grab a brush here so we can clean, clean the wax off of this. And um, yeah, so my wife and I got married at a museum that I've been going to since I was a little child in Worcester, it was called Higgins Armory, and it was the largest collection of arms and armor outside of the Tower of London in the world. And they just like all other things, um, uh, we got married in October of uh, 2012, and um, the um, museum closed that December. We didn't know it was gonna close, so they deascensioned a lot of the collection. I tried to buy a lot of it. A lot of it went for crazy money because it was a really good collection. You know, it was mm -hmm. really um, a big deal. But I have, you know, various things. I got some prints from the office of um, it was John, John, uh, Jonathan Woodman Higgins, who is the founder of the museum. And it was, it's also a cool building. The building's still there. It's the first ever multi-story steel building in the country. Um, but we have, um, I'm trying to think what else I, yeah, I, you know, a few, a few things that uh, came from, came from his office, sort of just some uh, steel and forging inspired type pictures, you know, and I actually have a couple little, he had paperweights on his desk that were anvils and I have a couple of those anvils. So, so the stuff that I bought was sort of meaningful and then nobody bid on this torch and that torch literally, it was, you'd walk in, it was a four story museum and you'd, you'd, you'd go through the lower level, you'd get in the elevator, go all the way up and work your way down. But as you're going through the lower level, there's like six or seven or eight things on display and that was there. So I'm like, I must own that. You know, so and it's kind of cool. It's actually got a, um, it's got a uh, um, fleur de lis. Actually, fleur de lis on the. I'll show you. Oh, fleur de lis on the uh, adjustment knobs. Um, but yeah, at this point, I could probably start. I mean, if there's questions, I'll start looking at questions closely in a second. Sure. Um, yeah, if you have any questions for Chris, you can go ahead and type them in. Want to see? So a little fleur de lis there. But super intricate. The gas nozzles. I mean, it was just a really, really cool. Uh, cool find and basically it actually had the tag on it um, this is the first oxyacetylene welding torch used in this country 1906 it was imported from France by the Worcester Press Steel Company to weld press steel um, so the Worcester Press Steel Company um, is was owned and founded by uh, Jonathan Higgins so that's how he got his money and made his money and he, he sort of at some point in his life just got really excited about um, arms and armor but yeah so that's why I have that silly thing Long, okay. long you, said story, from, you said it was from the 1700s is that right no the um the original oh, rose the engines rose were made in the 1700s yeah but mine was made in like i said 2005 so the story behind that is uh uh dr fred armbruster he lives in southern maine um he's an optic nerve surgeon and his hobby was building those machines and he decided to build a uh, uh, 22 of them um, with extra parts in case somebody ever broke one. This is like 2004, 2005. They were all pre-sold like that. Um, and I bought mine probably about three years ago now at this point. Um, uh, and, um, you know, I was lucky enough that serial number, serial number two, actually, that, um, that, that, that I bought. And um, he is just finishing up building um, four more. He found out that nobody was having problems. So he had all these spare parts. So he's like, oh, well, we'll build a couple more. So... Mm -hmm. um but uh yeah it's just beautiful i mean the whole machine is 
back a long time ago, like that torch, that machine, a lot of our machines are actually kind of beautiful. They're not these ugly mm -hmm. machines. Um, and it, machines used to be beautiful before they were designed to be um, a means to an end. They were an end to a means, you know, uh, so so effectively you had this beautiful machine, um, you know, and, and it's you can see it even in some of these older machines, you know, this this Jeffrey Brothers guilloche, uh, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, machine. Um, you know, if you even look at like some of the, the, the columns here, you know, they turned far more than they need to be, you know, and, and things just looked prettier, you know, and, um, you know, it was, um, it was a, just a different time when machines were made that way, yeah. you know, but yeah. So <laughs> any other questions or any questions we can answer for anybody? Yeah. If anyone has any questions, you can feel free to type it in the comments. Um, otherwise I will ask a few questions. Uh, so how did you get your training? Um, mostly stubborn and self-taught. So um, I actually, uh, I, I, when I left the army, I had a GI Bill and I went to school and I, um, I actually dropped out of school and um, mostly self-taught, took an apprenticeship at, uh, with a local jeweler. Um, but yeah, we just, um, I just, uh, I, you know, well, I said mostly self-taught and also honestly, like no joke, for the first five years of my career, Every time I placed an order with Rio or Guess One or somebody, I made myself buy a book and, and I, I, you know, I, I read them um, sort of yeah. sort of like crazy. So there's whole rows of jewelry books. Um, there's also my Santa Fe Symposium Research Library, which is really important. There's also some inspirational books that are more um, art books. You know, we've got a section on glass work. We've done some glass work in the past for people. We also have a big selection on machining and welding and brazing we we do a lot of things that are outside of um what you would consider the normal um you know the normal uh normal jewelry world of, of things i guess yeah. is the way that i would put it yeah yeah absolutely yeah i noticed yeah. that that collection when you first showed us the opera yeah i kind of i kind of went through quick there's there, there's woodworking books there too there's all mm -hmm. sorts of different things i mean I've, I've sort of always been of the mind that uh you know a printed book uh, i mean look, I, I love my Kindle too, right? You know, because um, I'm a voracious reader and I would travel with like three or four books and my luggage was always overweight. But um, having a book to refer to is a wonderful thing. Um, mm -hmm. it, it, can, it can get you just far enough to get into real trouble. Um, or if it's a good book, it can get you far enough to get out of that trouble as well. But, <laughs> um, you know, but. Do you ever do any teaching yourself? Yeah, we do. I didn't take you into Anne's space. Um, there's two things that happen. One is when when we're able to and when there isn't a pandemic, uh, you know, you know, sweeping around the country, um, we do wedding ring workshops so people can come and make their own wedding rings. Oh, nice. um, and that's really more Anne's domain. As I said, Anne teaches full time. You know, she's, uh, you know, September through June. Uh, well, September through May, done in the beginning of June. Um, jewelry manufacturing and repair. And then I teach workshops here and there. I used to teach a lot more, but we just got very busy for it. And then I know you, you had um, uh, an event with Jim Binion a few weeks ago. Jim yeah. and I uh, co-teach a class. And we also co-own a company together. A lot of our bigger Damascus, when I said we have a customer and I mentioned a carbon shaving company in Milwaukee, that's actually a customer of Laminated Metals Technology. We don't have a website right now. It's, it's what well, we do, but it's terrible. We're working on uh, one with professionals as we as we chat, um, but uh, Jim and I sell a lot of steel and mokume to uh, to other manufacturers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you do some of your training with Jim? No, oh. I, I took a well, I took a workshop from Jim years and years ago. But both he and Steve Midget, when they were teaching workshops, they were only teaching how to pattern. They weren't teaching how to fire billets because you know there was it was like all secretive and everything. And it's like uh, you know. Um, but, uh, but, but yeah, I've known Jim for a billion years. Mm -hmm. um, I think Jim and I, we spoke together at an event called CLASP, which ran for two years. It was put on by Rio. It was a great event and unfortunately it, it went away. Um, and then I took his class, I think the next year, um, you know, we were friends at that point and we, we just had a great time. You know, sometimes it's, it's all about the fun, you know? Yeah, yeah. Actually, it's always all about the fun. <laughs> I mean, you, you do know why the Danish Navy has barcodes on their boats, right? Um, no, I, I don't because know. Because they what... Scandinavian. Oh, oh, dad. I told you there'd be dad jokes. Dad I told you there'd be dad jokes. <laughs> <laughs> you were warned, so. <laughs> okay. Um, if, if You're like, you totally, audience... you totally derailed me. Sorry. No. <laughs> <laughs> if someone in our audience, you know, wanted to get some training, wanted to get into, into jewelry making, what would you recommend for them? 
Um, you know, I would I would say find a uh, there's a lot of small local schools uh, around or local colleges do, you know, extension classes and things. And that that would be where I would start. I mean, you know, uh, get get a taste for it. Take one class or take like a little week long workshop or weekend workshop. Even, you know, there's all sorts of basic metal smithing. You'll see uh, basic jewelry making workshops and it's going to be basic stuff to start, you know, using the flex shaft and stamping and, and, you know, cold connections, but take a few classes, see if you like it and then go for it. I mean, you know, and again, don't be afraid to, to buy, um, uh, to buy some, um, to buy, you know, to buy some books. Oh, great <laughs> question. So here's the question. Yeah, kitchenware. Um, so yeah, yeah. Um, uh, you can expand yes. it to kitchen. It, it, it's, it, the easiest thing to just say is yes at this point. Um, <laughs> we are already already sort of getting into that. Um, if you're just tuning in, you might have missed. You know, these are some um, these are some napkin rings uh, that we did on the rose engine. But um, I actually have. I didn't bother showing you guys downstairs. I have um, two bars of steel that were that were uh, made specifically for making some chef's knives out of. And you know, and we'll 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 do that at some point. Um, okay. It's been sort of a labor of love, but this is some of our new, this is a specialty um, uh, stainless steel that, that we're working on. That's AEBL and 304. Um, nice. So this will get turned into a paring knife pretty quickly here. What about, um, what about cutlery sets for the knife? Yeah, we we have um, you know I've got uh, I've got you know, I've got probably ten thousand CAD drawings that I'd love to have made. Mm -hmm. uh, we've talked sure. about it. There's actually local to us. There's a, a big, huge forging company about twenty minutes away, and the forging company um, they're real experts at um, at um, uh, closed die forging, and they'll actually make a die and they'll actually strike it for us. But yeah, I'd love to do some love to do some flatware. Um, I think yeah. it would be just phenomenal. But uh, you know. Um, all these things, you know, I've got to sell rings in order to fund. I mean, we've, you know, we all these like different things like drawer pulls that we've been making and working on, you know, I mean, you know, stuff like that. So it's sort of a, see if that, yeah, that looks pretty good. But yeah, we definitely, we definitely have plans. <laughs> Great. We look forward to seeing what you do next. I, I do too. Yeah. <laughs> what was your first experience with, with jewelry making? I, um, was trying to build a forge for casting aluminum uh, in sand, sand casting aluminum with a friend of mine. And Just for things, were, things were going horribly badly. So <laughs> I was like, I know what I'll do. I'll take a lost wax casting class for jewelry making because that'll help. And it didn't help at all, um, oh, okay. but it totally helped um, because I fell in love <laughs> with jewelry, you know? And, and, and you know, my, my first project was like, this carved wax ring. I mean, I look back on it. I don't, I don't know where it is now, thank God. And I wouldn't pull it out if it was, but you know, my first project weighed probably like 16 ounces. It was probably like a half inch thick. It was like, it wasn't a <laughs> ring. It was like a, a boat anchor, you know? Um, but yeah, that was my early on uh, experiences were more about um, uh, um, trying to get something out of jewelry for doing something else. But I was like, oh my God, I like this. This is great. Mm -hmm. I want to do this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, and you obviously still love what you do. I, I like my job. <laughs> it's easy to I see. do like my job. <laughs> yeah. Um, how do you get your machinery? I know you talked about the Rose engine, where that came from. Where do you get your other pieces? Do you go to auctions, estate sales? Yeah, everywhere. Um, you know, I mean, there's there's a couple suppliers, uh, a couple good suppliers. There's a couple good suppliers of machinery for jewelry makers. There's a couple of bad suppliers of machinery mm -hmm. for jewelry makers. I'm not going to name names. Um, mm -hmm. They know who they are. Um, but, uh, we do a lot. I mean, there's, there are specialty tool dealers. Um, but things like, like things like that Rose engine, you know, I made it sound like I, I, that didn't come easily. Um, you generally wait for those because there's so few of them and, um, they go for an obscene amount of money. I was lucky. I paid exactly what the guy who bought mine did in 2004. It's that's all he wanted to get out of it, but it was in his private airplane hangar tucked behind his airplane and motorcycle collection. So I had to wait like three months for him to move that stuff, to get it out. I was like, Oh my God, you know? Um, but, but yeah, you know, you, sometimes you get really lucky um with how you find things and i always keep my eyes open i subscribe to a ton of auction lists you know metalworking mm -hmm. auction lists and oh, some of we bought and some of we buy new you know our, yeah. our forging okay. press and forging hammer those were new when we got them so okay so you do you try to get second hand when possible I, I love secondhand. You know, I mean, I love a good deal. I live. I'm, I was born and bred in New England. I'm a cheap Yankee, so you know, I'm like, damn. You know, I'm like, woo, this is great. So, 
Do you recycle metal at all? Do you use recycled metal? Or? Yeah, so we recycle it to a recycler. Obviously, we refine our metal. Um, oh, no. We have done projects with people like, you know, pinball collector said, can you make a wedding ring for me out of a pinball? We had <laughs> we had metal shipped to us from, um, metal shipped to us from, uh, um, a shipwreck, a famous shipwreck that's in the Caribbean that, you know, we made wedding rings out of. So yeah, I'm, I'm game. I'll try anything. What the heck, you know, so. Is there any project you've said no to? Um, yeah, but it's just stuff that's usually not in my wheelhouse. You know, somebody lately, they asked us to make a menorah ring, but it was basically like a carved wax menorah ring with silver. And I'm not, I'm just not good at that. I don't, you know, I would, if I did it, it would look terrible. And I'm like, you don't want me to do this project. Trust me. You know what I mean? I'm not a, I carve wax like a drunk monkey. You know I mean? It's, it's just not, I need a machine to do my wax carving for yeah. me. So. Yeah. Okay. So no, no hand waxing cast for you. <laughs> no, no, that's just, it's, it's not my forte. And in fact, of what we make, very, very, very little of it is cast. The only thing would be like those rose engine rings that I showed you and I said we cut in wax. Yeah. That would be cast. Those napkin rings were cast. But other than that, everything's direct fabrication in our shop. So. Great. Um, you obviously love your job. What's your favorite part of what you do? <laughs> Going home at the end of the day. No, I'm teasing. Um, <laughs> I think for me, it's, 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 it's still, you know, it, we're been doing this for a long time now and it's still really meaningful to make wedding rings for people. But the, yes. the part that I, I, you know, that, that's, that sort of feeds the heart and the soul, but what feeds my brain is trying to make new stuff and pushing the envelope, trying to stick this metal to that metal. I mean, you know, it's, it's, um, it's, it's, a, that's a ton of fun for me. Um, you know, it's, uh, um, you know, just the whole experimental, the, I, you know, some people call it R&D research and development. I call it research and design, you know what I mean? And it's sort of, you know, it's this thing where it's, there's nothing better than making new stuff. I mean, you know, the bracelet that I wear that you guys have now yeah. that we're making a lot more of, that never would have come about if I didn't have time to say, hey, I wonder what would happen if we try to link this up and do this and cut this on the water jet and tap these holes and put in these screws. And oh my God, what was I thinking? This is a terrible <laughs> idea. Oh my God, this is a great idea. So, you know, yeah. but. <laughs> I mean, right now, this also sort of feeds my soul, the stuff we've been doing with Tony Lent. Let me just flip the camera for you. Yeah. Um, you know, Tony Lent jewelry, uh, Tony's one of the best goldsmiths in the country, and he's been die striking these you. objects, you know, and we've been combining them together with, with materials, you know, and like I said, these, 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 I love, you know, these are really near and dear to me, and it's a pretty basic form, um, pretty basic form you know but it's it's something that we're doing with tony and and sorry it's so dark i'm trying to hold it so that the it jiggles and you can see the damascus and you know mm -hmm. but things like that that i get to do with other people are really a lot of fun this is a piece tony did with with some of our mokume you know so diamonds for eyes ah sorry hang on there you go diamonds for eyes and it's hollow and it's just two halves that are put together you know with some engine turning work on the back and few gold stars you know these are these have been fun projects that we've been working on a lot lately I, I like doing stuff with other artists we have a couple other people we're working on some projects with now that are going to be really cool so um but more on that when they are done <laughs> till then i'm not saying anything <laughs> <laughs> okay so we'll look forward to seeing what that is <laughs> um well well thank you i think that was all of the questions awesome. that we had um oh here we've got Oh, this is from Catherine. Catherine owns this beautiful piece. Yes, she it's does. It's a bangle with raw gems inside. Yeah. And it makes this lovely noise and it tinkles and, and yeah. You know, we, we we totally could. Um, you know, we we made we probably made a half dozen of those. And it, you know, it's funny. You know, one of the things that I talk to Tony Lent about all the time is we say, okay, great, we're gonna make um, we're gonna make um, you know ten designs. And Tony's like, yeah, and we're lucky if two of them people like, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, that was a design that uh, you know, unfortunately, Catherine led the charge on that. She has outstanding taste. So did a few other customers, <laughs> but we never really marketed it well, so it sort of sort of died off. So it's still pretty priceless. I would say, don't lose it. <laughs> Well, if you want to, you can come into Abracadabra and, and admire Catherine's. <laughs> I, I, might, I might, I think I probably have the parts for a couple more somewhere. I'm like Fred Armbruster with the Rose Engine, right? And I'm like, I'll save these just in case. I, I don't know why, <laughs> but um, but yeah, I, I'd love, I, I, I honestly would love to revisit that, but um, I don't know that we're ever going to. Okay. Well, we look forward to seeing what you do next, um, as we just said. Thank you. 
thank you for joining us and thank you everyone in the audience for joining us again if you missed any part of this the video will be on our instagram on chris kloof's instagram as well as on our youtube channel and if you saw anything today that you'd like to see in person you can get in touch with us through instagram facebook you can call us so and we have to give you guys a little toast to all the viewers out there um local friends gate 37 honest weight beer a lovely grisette Thank you guys so, so much. I promise there'd be craft beer. No, this is really a brilliant event, you guys. Um, I, I wish more retailers were doing things like this. Uh, I would love to do more of these. And to all of you who, who, who listen to the rambling and the uh, craziness, well, this is for you and for me. Thank you very much. Have a great weekend. Thank you. You need to make a Damascus Steel Solo Cup next. <laughs> you working on it? Yeah, this is um, trying to... <laughs> You have to give it the same pattern as the solo cup. <laughs> well, we could do that, but all right. So we're out of here. Everybody have a great weekend. Thank you so much for your attention. We'll not focus on Anne's feet. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thanks for Thank joining you. us, Chris. Thank you, everyone, for joining us out there in Instagram world. Um, again, the video is on our Instagram. It's on Chris's Instagram. That's Chris Plouf. And it also will be on YouTube. And again, if you saw anything today that you'd like to see up close or get prices on, please just reach out to us. You can contact us via Instagram, Facebook, email. You can give us a good old call here at the store. Bye-bye. Enjoy your weekend.